Greetings and salutations out there. It's Dave Duford here at davidduford.com where I help insurance agents like you become top producing insurance professionals. Today I'm joined by a longtime friend in the business, Mr. Christopher Westfall. Chris, say hello today. Hey everybody, glad to be here, Dave. Yeah, thank you, Chris, for your time. So the reason I'm bringing Chris on is it's March 30th. Uh, last time I think we did an interview was probably about two years ago or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, Christopher is an expert in the Medicare supplement business. Uh, I would argue that Chris was the one that really pushed the telesales aspect of this business far in advance to what anybody else was doing at the time. And I'm sure he'll tell a little bit more about that in a minute. But the reason I'm bringing him on now is because right now we're amidst this coronavirus crisis. Um, the typical way of selling face-to-face -face is, is not working or will not work with enough time passing. Uh, I hope for the best, plan for the worst. Uh, uh, and I, I think, as we'll talk about here, the market for all of this is going to be fantastic. The question becomes, what's the method that's going to be best suited? So, uh, Chris, before we jump in and get into the details, why don't you tell my audience, if they're unfamiliar with your work, kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do. Uh, nothing amazing there. Uh, I started off my life as a, a kid wanting to grow up and be a superhero, pretty much like everybody else. Um, when I was 19, I, I pursued that and became a police officer in Florida because you could do that. And the next 20 years of my life went by uh, like a blur. The other thing I wanted to do was I uh, wanted to be a millionaire by the time I was 30. I didn't quite make it by 30 because I was stuck in law enforcement still. Uh, and so, yeah, and then I realized one day I'm going to stay in this job of what my fellow partners were calling human garbage collector because it just kept getting worse and worse and worse in law enforcement. Or I could get out and pursue something that uh, might put my family in a better spot rather than having to work seven days a week, two of those days on overtime just to pay the bills. So I got my insurance license back in 1994, 95, started doing final expense on my days off. So I was in patrol working two days on, two days off. My two days off, I would go in the field and run direct mail leads, final expense. Then we had a couple of hurricanes come through. As a matter of fact, it was seven hurricanes in one year. And it just hit me like, I am stuck. I'm dead in the water. I can't go see people. Our power's off in the neighborhood anyway. I can't do anything. So I, I started looking into who's doing stuff over the phone. Um, tried to do final expense over the phone, did it for a little bit, worked with a senior life out of Thomasville, Georgia for a short time and found out, hey, this can be done. Somebody's doing it. Then I investigated how can I do something else once I heard about the little concept called residual income, sell it once, get paid on it multiple years. Um, hooked up with a guy who recently sold his agency for upwards of $30 million to a big corporation. He got out of the business recently, all doing it all over the phone. And he really inspired me back then with one phone call he took the time and it changed my life. Um, I just knew that somebody could do it. And so I went out there and tried to venture on doing it first through direct mail and then later through telemarketing and then online. And we've just grown from there. We have a, an agency in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, of which I'm the only one in the office today because everybody's working remote, which it really doesn't matter. And um, we've just learned a lot of things along the way that it, it's just so much different today than it was back in the day where we literally had to mail applications to people. But anyway, that's how I got to where I am today. Cool, man. So fast forward to 2020, we're in uh, what could probably be described, no matter how big of a deal you think this is or not, as far as coronavirus goes, we're probably facing a recession if we're not already in it. Could be possibly the worst since World War II or prior to that in the Great Depression. How do you think COVID-19 will affect the Medicare business? Is it run for the hills? Is this going to change anything at all? Where, where do you stand on that, Chris? Uh, I have said every day since this thing began uh, how thankful I am yeah. to have landed in such a niche. I hold my family close every day, and, and we look at what the world's going through right now, and just thankful is all I have to say. We are luckily in a niche where um, the underlying premium is paid for by social security, by direct deposit, by the full faith in government of the United States. It's not a discretionary buy, it is a required buy. People know that Medicare only pays on a good day 80% of the Part B out of patient out of pocket costs for outpatient things. And so that's leaving 20% of an unknown infinite number that they're exposed to. And so it's something that they need to have. It's not a discretionary thing. 
and it's paid for by the fixed income that comes largely from social security and other things. So it's not impacted us at all, except that we're finding more people are home and we're calling back people who've expressed an interest in any way, shape or form. The calls are going through, we're connecting, we're having those conversations, we're writing more business. And I don't want to say to anybody, and I don't want anybody to misinterpret this to say that, Hey, you know, the water's great. Everybody jump in. I have nothing to sell to anybody. All I'm saying is I'm thankful. I'm thankful that we are in a business where it is recession proof. People need it. We're literally helping more people as a result of it. It's fewer dials with more connections. And um, it's, it's not affected our business at all. And conversely, I'm, I'm seeing things on Facebook because we're all spending more time on social media these days. And as I'm home, I'm watching in these insurance groups, property and casualty agents just freaking out. Their businesses that are their core customers are shutting their doors. They're canceling policies and they're wondering, what am I going to do? And they have a very similar license to, to my license. You know, we went and we sat for an exam. We got fingerprinted. We got the same license. And yet, just for the grace of God, I fell into this niche of trying to help older people. And it's paid off enormously. But during this time, it's just, it's a, it's a world changer, really. I'm just thankful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm the same way, too. It's, it's funny how life has a way of, you know, you, you, I'm sure, like you, I, I got into this business out of just complete desperation. You know, I, my uh, personal training business fell apart. And that was my baby. I remember the emotion of losing that business during yeah. the Great Recession. And you just don't know what your life gives or what will happen you know your biggest failure may be the biggest seed of opportunity you know and i certainly am too thankful as well um uh you know with um you know our line of work if anything there's more of a demand i would think that would be the same for medicare uh, yeah. anything people don't want to take this risk of in the and in, in this target market that's the biggest affected by it or at least the highest risk who wants to take a chance with your health insurance, you know, and it's hard to be excited about it because it's a great market to be in. We want to be respectful to the people who exactly. are going to be, you know, uh, victims of this mm -hmm. and out of nothing they did, you know, so, but that's, that's what's great about our market is it's going to do great for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Is, is it too late to get involved in Medicare? I mean, you know, you've been doing this, what, oh. 11, 12 years now. Um, yeah, just over the phone for 12 years, and we continue, we continue to see more people coming into the market. Of course, that old uh, axiom of 10,000, 11,000 people a day for the next however many years, there is no slowdown in the people that are, uh, you know, finding the material that I'm putting out there on the internet and calling in and referring their friends and their neighbors and their relatives, and they're getting rate increases elsewhere, so they're coming in. I see no downturn in this whatsoever. Um, we could have literally, and I, and I see other people like Spring Venture Group and eHealth and all that making huge, massive investments in call centers, thousand people plus on the phones doing what we're doing now. It's such a proven concept that corporate hedge fund people are investing big money into big call centers because there's a bigger demand than ever. Agents are retiring faster than ever. The older agents that are in their 60s and 70s are finally getting out of the business and and so there's such an opportunity now for an agent who can deliver, I think, first value education in the marketplace to then do the only thing that's required that's different, I believe, than face-to-face -face sales. And that is build the trust and credibility immediately, as quick as possible on the phone, so that they'll listen to anything that you have to say beyond that. And so an agent who can master that part of it has such an infinite opportunity now with, what, 50 million plus people that are on, on Medicare in the senior demographic alone. And it's just growing every day. The need is going to be there uh, so much. So there's so much business out there that any one agent can't say that they have the, you know, the stranglehold on the business and they're going to take everything from everybody. It's just a huge and growing pie for everybody. Right. Yeah. It's, it's wide open. It's, it, I would go so far as to say, you know, regardless of what happens in the economy for the foreseeable, unless, unless we're like hiding in our bunkers with our. Right. Right. If social MRA. security stops making checks happen, that would be a problem. We got bigger problems on our hand. It's all hands on deck, but I don't think it's going to get to that. You know, it's all a political landmine for any politician to try sure. to mess with. There's going to be 30 million seniors riding in the streets if that ever happens. So it's, that's good for us. It's a, right. it's the buttress against that. So, so, you know, a lot of agents right now are faced with that crisis of calling on the phone, 
your normal face-to-face -face approach is not working. People are understandably refusing face-to-face -face appointments. Mm -hmm. What is, what would you say would be the way in which an agent can best transition to, in your case, say, let's say somebody likes the idea of selling Medicare supplements, what would be the best process to transition from a face-to-face -face setup to a telesale setup? It's kind of a big topic when we kind of break it down, but like, what do they definitely need to do differently to be successful over the phone? Well, and you've had guests on before that have talked about this, but I'll just reiterate the most important thing that I've seen is to build the trust and credibility right away to take control of the call so it doesn't wander everywhere because that can eat through your time of your day. You need to qualify people as soon as possible. If they're over 65, they're already on Medicare. Can they qualify health-wise to make a transition? Because in most states, they must qualify health-wise to make a change from a Medicare supplement to a Medicare supplement. If they're going through open enrollment, find out if they even have any interest in doing business with you whatsoever at any point in the future. Just a little upfront contract that if I deliver everything that I say, if everything that you investigate about me checks out 100% like it will, can you then at least give me a shot at earning your business and being your agent going forward so that you're not just left out in the wind when you get those rate increases in the future? Because that's what we specialize in is relationships and staying in touch with you down the road. So when you can set the parameters of the call first to, to make sure that they're going to be even receptive to what you have to present. If they never buy it, this is what I found. If somebody says, um, I'm not interested or it's too much money or I don't understand it, all those other things, or I'll look into it, I'll call you back, what's your phone number, give me your information, I'll look into it. All that saying, all I hear every time, and if I listen to one of my people uh, in a conversation like that, we failed to build the trust and credibility. It's saying, I don't trust you. So I can't listen to anything that you're offering to help me until I trust you. And the old saying of people buy from who they know, like, and trust, if we don't establish that, and that's on us, that's 100% on us to build that in every call. And I'm not a big script person, but I'll tell you this, if you don't have that as the principle, the foundation of every start to every phone call with a new person, you'll never get anywhere in this business. Secondly, I'd say though, it's very important if someone's going to make a transition into telephone sales, if you build it, they will come. If you build a, a backstop that when they get off the phone with you and they do their due diligence, because here's one big difference in a Medicare supplement purchaser that we deal with every day and the low income subsidy or the dual eligible, the chronic people typically that are on a Medicare Advantage plan. These people have computers, they have high speed internet, they're going to search the heck out of you. They have an iPad or whatever, and they're gonna search for you and they want to see that there's some congruency between what you say you do and what they found online. And if they find on LinkedIn that you're a, you know, a carpet installer somewhere still because you didn't up update your LinkedIn for years, that's going to be a problem. That's not consistent with what you're saying you're doing. What they're trying to find out is, there's gotta be something hidden here. There's got, I'm gonna find it. There's gotta be something about this guy that's suspicious. What are the reviews? What are the ratings? Can I find him through a Google site? Because all sites that are credible are gonna be found on Google, right? So I think it's important for an agent to set up an online presence that when people are actively searching for them, they are going to be found. And it's not that hard to do. I would start with Google My Business, LinkedIn, Bing, all free. And they can establish with the highest domain authority that's out there, the fact that you do exist and you do what you say you're going to do. And then I would go after your existing clients and every time really work them hard for reviews. Did I make it hard? Did I make it easy? Could you please put that in a review? And here's the link to do that. And so as you start to build your online authority, then even if Google can't find you from a needle in a haystack from anybody out there selling Medicare, at least when somebody's literally Google searching you with a long tail keywords of Christopher Westfall Medicare, Everything they find needs to be consistent with the fact that this is my mission. This is why I'm doing it. Here's what I look like. Here are my credentials. Here's my family. So that when you're doing the transition into the phone sale, you can say, just do me a favor. Look at me online. Google search me and see if everything that I said is true. You can have your license up there. You know, the picture of the family does wonders. In the old days, we used to do screen shares. As soon as we could, we'd get them on the screen share back when no one was buying over the phone. We'd have to build that credibility some way. And I'll say, look, can you just go to my website, type in this code, you'll get on my screen, I'll show you my PowerPoint that I did of you know, my law enforcement days, when I got my license, all that kind of stuff. Now it's so much easier though. We don't even do screen share ever in my office anymore. We never use cameras, we never use that kind of technology anymore. We just don't have to. As long as we can point to online resources that we've made along the way and say, look, I see that there's a trust issue here. 
And we're not going to bridge this trust issue right here on the phone. So I'm going to encourage you, do your own research and you'll find that what I'm offering you is legit and who I am is legit. You'll see hundreds, if not thousands of good reviews about us online. And then and only then would you make an agreement with me that once your research proves that I'm legit, you'll listen to what I have for you because I'd like to do for you what we've done for thousands of other people. Is that fair? And, leave, and what can they say? Because it all comes back to trust. It, you know, and, and first of all, you've got, let me plug your, your agent training site, medicareagenttraining.com, correct? Yeah. I'm sure you've got plenty of resources on just doing exactly what you described because you've been doing this for years. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you guys, this is like the little secret weapon here <laughs> is you should spend time branding yourself because this is a product in which is a homogenous to an extent mm -hmm. uh, commodity type product right. and you need to think of ways to creatively uh, expand beyond that and, and the big issue here is going to be trust it always is yeah. and there's plenty of resources right now that you can leverage you don't need to be the master of the universe on SEO or ranking in YouTube or Google because most people, like you said, if you do outbound and you're finding leads and you give them, like you said, David Duford Medicare, mm -hmm. they'll find all that specific stuff in Google. Google will find that for you. They'll find that right away. And you can build your message right from there. And it, it's not as hard as you think, but it does amazing things. I've seen it in my personal business as, as a marketing. It, it's just, it's, you know, and, you know, I'm doing more of it now than I ever have because it works. You know, so, and it will work for you in, in your own unique way as well. Don't you agree, Chris? Absolutely. <laughs> and and so many, you know, when they sign up for a membership on my website, I send them an invitation so we can do a video conference and kind of help them where the, wherever they are, take the next step. And I will Google search them while they're on the conference with me. And I'll say, are you still working at the whatever factory? Are you still doing this? Because online, that's all I can find about you. So if you're going to go all in. Right. And I always encourage them, do this stuff at night when there's no other way you could possibly on the phone with the prospect, but create what they're going to find. If you build it, then they'll actually find it. And there's nothing else you can do late at night anyway. Turn off the Netflix for a while and start working on your online presence to build the credibility that you want from other people. And it just gets better over time, especially if you continue to produce content for people, write articles, write blogs, do videos, whatever it, whatever it takes to get you to be found. You've got to control what they're going to find when they're Google searching you at least. Yeah. It, and it's, it doesn't take that much time. Right. I mean, we're talking about an hour a day, you know, you don't have to go watch whatever you watch at night. You can spend creating something that's going to pay you dividends for your entire career. And here's the great news, ladies and gentlemen, 98% of the people listening to this won't do that. <laughs> Probably a little low balling it there. So, uh, but Chris and I in our own ways can say, yeah, it's definitely paid off all that upfront effort. Um, let me step back a, a step here, Chris, because I might be assuming too much here. So my audience may not know about the benefits from a, a business standpoint of selling Medicare. We've talked about talking about, uh, you know, Medicare over the phone and the differences of building trust. But can you describe kind of the, you know, you mentioned the residual opportunity. Can you kind of describe how that works with Medicare and why that's a good thing? I could describe it, Dave, but unless you've experienced it, it just, you can't grasp it. It's compounding interest on the, on the income that you make. <clears throat> if you sell a person one time and you take care of them correctly, you will get a raise from them every few years. You will get a lifetime's worth of income and an endless stream of referrals. It's not the big upfront, um, huge cash infusion that it would be selling a big annuity um, but it is a get rich slow opportunity. And here's the part that so many agents miss as I've talked to thousands of agents now over the years, right at the three or four month mark, it seems like everybody has the same uh, come to Jesus meeting. They're like, do I continue? Because this is not showing a lot of fruit right now. Or do I quit and try something else that's going to pay off bigger dividends quicker? And the massive investment that comes back in a massive return is reserved for the people who last through their first year. And if there's any way you could, and I've said this so many times, though, deliver pizzas, uh, work in a fast food place, do whatever it takes to consistently produce to the point that your residual income outspends your outgo every month, 
then the scales will be lifted off your eyes and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm making more money whether I get out of bed or don't get out of bed than I did before when I was working full time. And then if you start taking that next step and that is put people to work, make jobs for people, find talented people who can multitask and you know walk and chew gum at the same time, put them to work in your agency so that it's not just all on you and then start exponentially growing to scale, which again, I think is the only way you can do that is over the phone, at least in my little experience here. But if you ha start having five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 people in your office like I do now, it changes everything. And you have a layer of management on top of that, that they're consistently giving out the same training to everybody. And then you're working on your business instead of working in it. The stress level goes down greatly and you can, you can leverage the talents of other people who see things from perspectives like my people do that I just don't see. They see my blind spots, they see my weaknesses and they're like, um, you might wanna correct this little thing over here and you might wanna address this weakness over there. But then it just starts to get really fun. So the short answer to the residual income is um, it's nice, but it's reserved for the people who have the long commitment to making it work. And I think that first year of everybody that I've ever interviewed that's been really successful, that's taken the advice to be in the industry in the first place, picked up clues from everywhere that they can and figured out the in-between parts. The thing that they always point back to is either the three to four month mark or the six to seven month mark where they had a critical life-changing decision of, do I keep with this even though I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the massive results. I don't see the big picture. And like Rush Limbaugh says, with half his brain tied behind his back, you just got to put your head down, forget everything else, and just talk to people. See where you can help. If your heart's right and your volume's right, then everything works out to the extent that you just have no idea how much trying to bless people, trying to help actual seniors in little ways, one person at a time, adds up to a lifetime value that you'll leave your kids an amazing inheritance that they never would have had had you just worked a job working for somebody else your whole life. Not that there's anything wrong with that, absolutely. But it's the hard work, it's the reinvesting the profits initially. It's the doing the things that other people who fail are never ever willing to do that, that turns a residual income into an empire. And then you can really start to help people who are hurting in bigger ways. Uh, one of the things we did, we donated um, bulletproof vests to an, a sheriff's office in Texas that that had 15 year old vests, they're out of date. They don't even work anymore. Shortly after that, one of their deputies got involved in a shooting, uh, sadly, but with a bad guy who had a, a weapon as well. And it's like, that's, that's my passion is like giving back to an agency who didn't have the resources to have a critical life-saving function that they needed. And yet as an agency, we can make that donation. And other, other services where there's nobody stepping up. What are we going to do for these people? And we can just write a check to those people and it's not going to hurt us one bit. The only way you can get all that is just by doing what other people are not willing to do. And that's stay the long course with these small little policies, little bitty policies that you never would have thought would add up to millions of dollars. But over the course of time and growing to scale and doing it with a model that works, it absolutely does. And it's kind of exciting. You know, I think of, I think of two things in particular and I'm, I'm on my way. One day I'll get to where you're at. <laughs> but I can kind of see some of the same, some parallels. It's interesting because I'm nine years into my career. There's two things I think of. Number one, we all started the exact same way that every other agent did. You know, we had the same doubts. We had the same frustrations. And now we're at a point where we have all of this accumulated information and experience. And, and the thing I think of is like, why wouldn't people do this? If they would just see if they could just see the the fruit of a career and not look at this as a two or three month then I'll get out of this thing if, if they just realize what this business gives to those people who commit to it why would they ever want to quit because I'm not I'm not anything special I just work harder I think than a lot of others and I think you have to if everybody has to be successful so I think of that and it's like how do I communicate that to people even more because uh, it's a heck of a lot better than working for somebody else. And then number two, I'm not a religious person, Chris, but your your entire description there, it, it, it comes back to having faith, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, this, it's, it's amazing how much there's a parallel to that and having the faith despite everything else telling you not to do it and, and to keep your head down and, and, and trust. And um, 
I don't know. It's just, it's just, uh, it's an interesting business, isn't it? <laughs> the definition of the Bible says the definition of faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. And it takes the faith of a mustard seed, super tiny to ever grow into that mountain. But so many people lose sight of that when, and I get it, I get it, I get it. I had little kids to feed when I left a salary with the government. I understand. We went through a foreclosure because I didn't figure it out quick enough. I understand. But we still stayed there. We continued. I saw one policy a week, two policies a week, five policies a week, 10 policies a week. And we just started looking long-term like, I know this is going to pay off. I know it's going to pay off. Because why? Because Richard Cantu gave me the, the, um, the impression that it, it can work. And the dude has just proven it to so many people in our industry now. And I've seen him on multiple company trips over the years. And every time I just want to grab him and Sally and say, thank you so much for inspiring me that this can work. Did he say, this is the clothes to use every time. This is the opening to use every time. This is the company to represent. No, he gave me a glimpse of what the future could be if I counted the cost, if I took the time and the energy away from everything else that tries to steal our attention away from us today, which is everything out there, it tries to steal our attention and keep us from what we're capable of. But my gosh, man, just by him having that, um, that oasis, that, that image of that's where I could be one day. And now to see him cash out and sell his agency for so much and prove it to the big corporate world that, hey, my model works is so dadgum reassuring. It's like reassuring to me 12 years later and going, wow, look at that outcome. And do I ever want to have a thousand person call center? Absolutely not. I don't want the headaches from it, all those people. But the people that we do have, we get to know them in a personal way. We get to invest in their lives. We get to go through things together, figure out things together. And it's fun doing it as a team. But even for an individual agent, just doing it this morning, I, I spoke to one of the agents that I work with. He's 24 years old. He's now breaking into six figures a year doing this in residual income. And he spends his weekends, three day weekends, most of the time, just backpacking through the woods and through the forest and going to see waterfalls and enjoying life when the other 24 year olds that are out there and that he sees all over the place are struggling. They're wondering what to do. They're losing their jobs right now. But because he had the faith and he was at that three or four month mark where he was about to give up because this wasn't working, he was going to people's houses. Now imagine this, 21 years old, knocking on the door with the lead card going, I'm here to talk about your Medicare insurance. And they were shutting the door in his face because they made a judgment based on his appearance that this kid can't tell me anything about Medicare that's going to help me. And when he switched over the phone, it changed everything for him because he knows what he's talking about. And his delivery over the phone is just perfect. But when he switched to, you can't see me anymore, you're going to have to listen exactly what, to what I'm saying. All of his credibility was there because he does know his stuff. And he stuck with it through the hard times of figuring it out on his own. And so we've just seen story like that after story after story, whether it's an old person who says, I can't do technology. Well, guess what? Can you talk on the phone? That's what's involved here. Well, I have to do all this computer stuff and computers. No, it's really not that hard. These e-apps today are so stinking easy. If you do mess up, it'll say, nope, go back. You've missed something. You know, but anyway, I could talk all day. Yeah, yeah, no, no worries. We're, we're, we were halfway done here. So plenty <laughs> of talking left to do. So let's talk about some tactical stuff with telesales. So what, lead, you know, a common question you're going to get, I'm sure you get daily, weekly, is what leads are best for selling Medicare supplements over the phone? Can you kind of give us some perspective on what an agent should look for, what type of leads, that kind of thing? Um, Myrtle Beach is about an hour and a half from here. There's an agency up there that does uh, Medicare sales exclusively using direct mail. I think direct mail is very expensive nowadays, especially for Medicare, if you can't get them on the phone and everything. But the day that I met with their CEO, they literally wrote 150 applications that day. It blew me away. They bought their own building, their own printing presses and everything. They got three of them. So I know, I know that they all work. Direct mail works. It's got its price point. Um, online leads works. Google AdWords works. There are a lot of call centers that have big, deep pockets with big investors that are competing with you against those Google AdWords campaigns. Uh, I know that organic lead creation works the best because it doesn't cost anything, but it takes a lot of time and investment in time before you ever see any returns from that, but that's ultimately the best. But what most of our agents literally are experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis with quicker returns 
and having somebody legitimate to talk on the phone that's really interested is still telemarketing, still either them cold calling or having somebody in the Philippines or something cold call for $3 an hour to generate about a lead every hour, hour and a half on the phone of somebody that's legit interested. Now, whether they can qualify or not, whatever the circumstances are in their life, that does not ultimately lead to a sale, of course, but we're seeing a lot of traction with telemarketing still to this day. Um, like I was saying the earlier, the agent that's so young, he just hired his seventh telemarketer that works for him full time. And he's got one of them managing the rest of them so that he can just focus on skimming down to the ones that are the most qualified so he can, you know, flip their business and, and make the sales happen. So I think telemarketing is the most responsive. It's a quick thing. Uh, Facebook leads do work, but in the in the eyes of the people who focus on Facebook lead generation or have, they've been that and they've checked it off. The call centers that I've talked to a lot on these trips, they're saying that their close ratio on Facebook leads is about 3%. And I'm like, oh my God. So 97% of my time that I'm spending are on people that I'll never get anywhere with. And I want to value our time a little better. I'd rather pay for a higher quality lead. I'd rather develop a higher quality person to talk to that's going to cost me more. Uh, and you can get that by keyword searches that people are doing, like on Google AdWords and YouTube and the other things, and Bing, when they're searching for something. And now, suddenly, now you appear in their newsfeed. Now you appear on different ads that they're seeing across the, the display network of Google and so right. forth as opposed to interruption marketing, just because they happen to be over 65 years old or approaching 65, you're interrupting them. They'll say, I didn't fill out anything. That lead form, that's not worth much because they just, they could accidentally hit it with their thumb and they filled out their information. Um, so online leads are great. Telemarketing leads are still great. There might be a day, one day in the future where nothing works over the phone anymore and you have to do everything online. That might happen one day, but as of today, in 2020, the telemarketing is still working. And unlike a Medicare Advantage focus, it's not illegal to cold call somebody for Medicare supplement, which is so nice. Uh, there's no uh, CMS telling you what the exact guidelines are for what you can say and who you can call and where you can call them, except for the state of Ohio. We can't telemarket to Ohio. Um, but it all works. And there's so much latitude that you have as long as you're not defrauding somebody, making false claims or doing something unethical with a Medicare supplement focus, you can do it all and it's completely legal and you don't have to get everyone's permission to, you know, to use a marketing piece or a script. So can you describe your, uh, you, your telemarketing program that you offer agents and kind of how that works? Cause a lot of people are interested, like you said, it's, it's funny, telemarketing does work very well in this business yeah. model. Um, but you've got kind of a unique approach to do it. I think agents really benefit from, can you, can you describe? Yeah, we've got, first? we've got two, um, one is a done for you service where they just buy leads from a, um, a telemarketing organization that's actually in the Philippines. They just pay one set cost and the leads are done for them. The, and that works. The challenge with that is you can't customize the lead to make it better, 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 fine tune it to what you would like to have asked and all that, but it does deliver a quicker lead. And the other program is run by Eugene, a friend of mine that I'm a partner in his business with him. And he will literally go find, recruit, train telemarketers over there and then deliver them to you as a finished product that continues to get better. They continue to monitor them, make sure that they show up to work every day and all that as they're going through their learning process. But that does involve that the agent needs to get their own dialer, which they show you how to do. They show you how to load your own data in there. You get to pick which demographic you're going to be calling and where. And then the telemarketer is ready to go. And that's what a lot of agencies have found success with, with leads that are 3 to $5 each, which are the same leads that are 15 to $20 each if somebody else did that for you. So it's kind of a longer approach to making your business as profitable as possible by not having the middleman generate that lead for you. You're in con total control of the whole process. And it's scalable too. I think this yeah, is what exactly. your 24 year old kid's doing, right? Yeah. I mean, he's seven people, six people calling. Yeah, I mean, seven now. You know, I've, and you've been doing this for a number of years. I've run into agents who've said it's really good for him. It's worked very well. So definitely yeah. check that out if you're interested out there, guys. Uh, let's talk equipment real quick here. So again, let's picture the agent who's coming into telesales. They may not even sell Medicare at all, but they want to do it. What kind of equipment software should a MedStop agent uh, be ready to use? This is a Sennheiser $30 USB headset with a noise canceling microphone that I get on Amazon. It's a wired thing that goes by USB. We have some of our desks in here that have the, the wireless ones. I think we like either Sennheiser or Plantronics, the wireless ones where you can get around, get up and walk around. But when we started having hurricanes here in, in South Carolina, we bought a whole bunch of these USB ones. Then we bought laptops, refurbished ones from uh, Amazon. 
and we had all of our software put in there, which is really not much. It's just a voice over IP dialer. Uh, we use Nextiva. I'm not real happy with them right now. We might look at some other provider, but that doesn't really matter. We, just any phone provider that we can have a software version of it. We also have it on our phones if we need to as a backup. It can be on the computer, but we don't need a physical uh, desk phone anymore. We just don't need it. So all of our people, when this coronavirus thing hit, we said, we've got go bags in there, start working from home. Everybody take them home on Friday. And by that Monday, they'd shut down all non-essential businesses and all the like. And I know that insurance is an essential service, but we have people in here that have babies at home, grandparents at home, and we don't want them to be commingling to the point that they're stressed out, not able to do their job because they might pick up something at work. So they, they deployed before most everybody else did from working from home because we have the go bags and everything that they need is there. It's a mouse, mouse pad, laptop, and headset. And that's it. It doesn't take any fancy computer. And again, we don't do screen share. We could if we needed to. We use the the uh, CRM Radius Bob, which is the goofiest name for a CRM ever. But we've they, developed they took some... the Bob out. Now it's just Radius. Oh, Radius. good. Thank <laughs> God. It's got some neat automations that we've uh, put in there. So we change a category of a lead from, you know, cold prospect to warm prospect to quoted already. It, it starts this automation and it sends them a, a, an email with a video that talks about where they are in the process, what the next, next step could be when they're approved. It, it's really cool. It sends them an approval email that goes out and pulls out their policy number, their start date, the plan that they wow. chose and just puts it in there and sends it out to them. And all that's online. It's a hundred percent online. So our people could do that from anywhere. We had a power outage at our building about six months ago. Everybody got their go bags and we went down the street to a, um, we call those uh, offices. It starts with an R. Um, anyway, we can go in there and just set up shop. We yeah. rented the conference room that's out. Nice. Well, yeah. yeah. And we were all just working in a conference room. It was a little bit noisy, but we didn't miss any appointments. We didn't miss any applications. So the only technology really that we have is that USB headset, which works just fine. And any old computer and these old refurbished, um, I think they're Samsung laptops work just great. And that's really, that's all the big technical secret that we use. Don't need to go fancy. Not at all. But I would probably add in there because you mentioned it earlier, website you know, have yeah. your stuff set up online, kind of in the same category here. Yeah. So we, I like uh, WordPress for my website stuff. I know you do too. You yeah. can adapt it to so many different things, but for an agent just starting off, there are a lot of free websites that you can start up. You can do uh, wix.com, W-I-X. You can do weebly.com. They're, they're good enough for a landing page presence. And I always encourage agents to shoot a video of themselves telling people who they are, why they're in this business, and put that foremost and prominent on the website because that's what people want to see most is who is this person? Can I trust them? And if you're right there telling why you do what you do, and even a cell phone shooting that video is better than nothing. It's better than a lot of other things because it's got that pattern interrupt of, wait a minute, is this guy like for real? This is like reality television yeah. telling me right now what he's in this business for, why he's doing it. Um, so having that on a landing page, which again, you could even do for free with one of those things is better than nothing for sure. And I'll tell you guys, um, as somebody who has literally recorded hundreds of videos off of this old thing, uh, nobody knows I'm not using some, you know, multi thousand dollar, like that's just a, it's avoidance behavior. You know, right. you, it, the goal is to humanize yourself, right? right? The goal is to separate yourself and exactly. you don't need fancy technology to do it. You just have to have the part of somebody who wants to help and put it out there and people will be immediately, immediately give yourself that point of differentiation. It makes a huge difference. That's true. So let's talk about some of the structural, or I should say markets or maybe sub markets of Medicare. Maybe you could kind of talk about them because there's some different ways that you can do this. So there's what's known as the T65 market and then also the T67 market for, at least for Medicare supplements. Yeah. What's the difference between those? And what would you say to a new agent getting into this business? Where should they target? What would be best for them? Um, tell you my story real quick. When I started off, I wanted to be the superhero again. I wanted to help everybody out there. And what I discovered was when I called people 67 to 74 years old, they had never heard from their agent again that knocked on their door when they were turning 65. They didn't know who it was. They didn't know who to call when I get a rate increase. They're just mad. And I found a lot of traction with that market. And I wrote a couple of carriers who later I learned were not treating people that great and I had to switch carriers, which we do as we learn, we go through and see who takes care of people and who does not. But um, one of the things that's a benefit of doing, not doing the turning 65 market is you're gonna make more per case. 
Because if you can just think of it, the lowest rate you could ever have as an agent upon which your commission is based as a percentage, the lowest premium you're ever going to write is a person that is turning 65. All the companies want to be very, very aggressive in that pricing model. And then when they turn 70 and so forth, now the real rates are, are going to hit. Well, your income is a direct correlation to what that premium is. So if you're targeting the cheapest and the cheapest, cheapest people, then your, your commission per sale is going to be a lot less. What a lot of agents don't realize in this market with the Medicare supplement, even as they go to 66, 67, 68, 70 years old, what you wrote them on at 65 is the basis upon which your commission is always locked at until and unless you rewrite them later at a different rate with a different carrier, you're always going to make commission, the same commission based on what they locked in when they first came to you. Even though they're getting rate increases, you don't participate in the rate increases, on, again, unless you rewrite them elsewhere, which is another incentive to stay in touch with your people. And if they get a big rate increase, to offer to move them where you can. So the older people, I really like it a lot, and I always have, because yes, you have to go through underwriting. Yes, you have to see if they qualify. And that's the first step in not wasting both of your time is to see if they can qualify health-wise. But you don't have to educate them on Medicare. They know how Medicare works. They're sold already. Yeah. And if you can literally say to them, I don't want to change your benefits, I want to change your rate. So you already understand how Medicare works. Nothing changes. There's no pre-existing condition limitation. There's no waiting period. It's instantly old plan, new plan, rate drops sometimes by $100 a month or more. So literally, I always said, I'm giving seniors money every day. That's what I do. That's my job. And I love that. And I can sleep very well at night knowing that I've put every single person that would allow me into a better position than before they met me if they'll let me you know, come along with them on that process. The other one is the turning 65. And in the book, Red, Red Ocean, Blue Ocean, whatever it's called, that's the red ocean. That's where all the shark frenzy is. That's where there's blood in the water, where every agent is competing. And every company, every call center, every corporation is competing for that finite number of people that are turning 65 every day. But if you think about it, just as many people that are turning 65 every day are also now turning 67, right. 68, 69. So the turning 65 market requires a lot of follow-up. They're not one call closes. They also need multiple touch points in many different ways, and they need education. They need to know what is Part A of Medicare? What is Part B? What are these supplements? What about these free Medicare Advantage plans? That sounds too good to be true. Tell me all about that. <clears throat> what I've done makes it a lot easier because through the internet marketing, we have a lot of people that are aging into Medicare that are calling in. And rather than having 12 people out there saying the same thing about Part A, Part B, Plan N, Plan G, Plan F, all that, I reduced each one of those conversations down to a video that I could put like a PowerPoint behind it, clearly explain it as if they were attending a seminar live or attending a one-on-one -on -one presentation with me. <clears throat> and because I am the brand that they're responding to, I do all of those myself. So our people can leverage the credibility of whatever that led them there in the first place and watch a not perfect, it's not perfect, but I've taken out all the junk where I screwed up and I've cut those out for the most part and left in only what works so that they can duplicate my efforts many, many times out there. And talking about plan in takes me like 15 minutes, but that 15 minutes is now leveraged times 12 people giving that right. out five times a day. And they can say, watch this video. It'll explain it where you can see it, hear it, pause it, go back if you didn't understand something. And then I'll call you back <clears throat> when this is over. And now you'll have a better understanding than if I just tried to describe it for you and you're painting word pictures in your own mind. And that has really leveraged their time so much more, uh, answered all the questions that people typically have, and they come back to, okay, who's the best company and why? And how do I get started with this? So it really narrows down the, the negatives of uh, attacking that turning 65 market, which we don't do on purpose. It just happens that way that people are calling in. So there's benefits to both. The over 65 market is where I really felt like I was really doing the best work for people. I'm not trying to sell them something. I'm not trying to lasso in that person away from 15 other agents and trying to cut them down like so many agents try to do and say, well, we're better, here's why. I'm the sole person out there crying in the wilderness saying, you don't have to pay that much. Let me help you. Here's what's going on. If you leave it undone, you're gonna to continue to pay more every single year while your health qualifies you for it. If it does, let me see if it does. And that's qualification also a takeaway. If you can qualify to save money, please let me help you. If I can help you, if I can get you approved, will you let me be your agent so that this doesn't happen again? 
so that you're not an orphan client, as they call it, and I can take care of you every single year monitoring what's going to happen in the marketplace. And that's where I really feel the best, um, the best difference that we make helping seniors. And, and I know you've talked about the T67 market for years. I mean, you think still it's pretty wide open there? I mean, is there still good opportunity? Yeah, huge. And the, and the thing about it is when you are face-to-face, -face, you're very limited to your geographic area where you might, you know, like Doug does, drive two hours away from his house and then drop mail there and then you've got your little honey hole. Or you could sell over the phone, upgrade your business to the fact that you can reach out to a state that just launched a new product and it's gonna be great for people. They've never heard of it before. It's a name brand company. You can get a license on NIPR.com in about 30 minutes. So you can start working a whole different market. All you do is you pull the data for that area and suddenly now you've got leads in that area. And so you're not limited. When I first started doing this over the phone, I was in central Florida, like 98% Medicare Advantage territory. All my friends are doing Medicare Advantage and every AEP they would tell me, oh my God, this, this HMO just shut down. I have to move hundreds of people over to this HMO. I'm like, well, when are you going to get any new clients? Well, they can't because they're scrambling to conserve what they already had. They have maxed out. And so I said, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this advantage stuff where I'm going to maybe not put them in the best position. And I've got a whole story on that, but I can put them on a supplement where they can go to any doctor anywhere in the country and I can sell this over the phone and help people in far away, far flung places that my local or my chair is has no relevance whatsoever to my ability to help people. I can just add on another state and start going to another state. So speaking of advantage, I think that's a good point to bring up and discuss. So are you saying that agents can just strictly sell supplements over the phone? Um, it, and should they be selling advantage as well? What, should they do both? One or the other? What's your thought? Yeah, starting, starting off, I think it's, it's good for just like a life insurance agent to start off doing final expense because it's, it's simple, it's duplicatable, and they can grasp that pretty good before moving into IULs or complex stuff, single premium life maybe, and all the other annuities and everything that you can do with a life license. On the Medicare side, I think the Medicare supplements are just that way. They're simple, simple to explain. Marketing rules are virtually non-existent, again, unless you're doing something wrong or unethical. So it's a very easy, fast track to learn and help people. Um, if you're staying within the Medicare supplement world as well, you're talking to a different demographic. By and large, we found that the Medicare supplement buyer is on the upper two thirds to the top one third of income earners, which lends itself to other opportunities where you can help them as well, like long-term care, annuities, managed money if you want, life insurance on a bigger scale than maybe just a burial quote unquote insurance policy. A lot of other things come out of that. And on the company trips, I'll meet so many people that are like financial planners and hmm. big, big uh, money producing people like manage money and all that. And they just use Medicare as the door opener, save them some money, yes, and then move them into the bigger, bigger products that they can help them with because they are typically the more affluent people. And some agents are like, are there enough people that are buying Medicare supplement? Yeah, a whole bunch of millions of them that are in the Medicare supplement space. Whereas Medicare Advantage are typically reserved for, and this is a generalization, I know there are people that are different, but the people who can't afford maybe a Medicare supplement, and they don't have a choice but to choose between an HMO, hopefully a PPO or an MSA plan, and those people are less, less able to have discretionary funds where they can add on things like a cancer policy or whatever else they want to add later, dental vision hearing and the other things that naturally come out of our Medicare supplement sale. So you can target either demographic based on the income of the people that you're going for. I do think later on as your business matures, it is helpful to have access to everything and it's not easy. So we're certifying now in I think 46 different states and we had to get the agent, agency license appointments and certifications for everybody in all those states as an agency, which is not cheap, so that our downline agents can actually represent all those and do it over the phone in a completely 100% compliant way. So we do offer them not all the companies, just the ones that we've chosen to offer. And we make it simple to do it, but still we want our clients to have the full understanding of here are your options. You've got this route and you've got this route. Here's the best of both. And here's the limitations of both. And primarily as with everything, really it's your budget that's going to drive your options. If your budget does not lend itself to paying a hundred dollars a month, then get an advantage plan, but right. by gosh, get the best one you can possibly go with. Do your research on it. We've done that research too. And here's the ones that we offer in your area. And I can tell you about those. So we can pivot and go either way. 
Um, I've never lost a whole lot of business before I did Medicare Advantage or did it over the phone by people saying that they're going to Advantage, ex except for the people who were old, like 75, 78, and their health no longer allows them the option to change. And their rates just go through the roof to the extent that they can't afford it anymore. And that breaks my heart every, every time. Now we've got the, at least the ability to say, if you can't afford it, we've got options. It may not be the best kind of insurance you can buy, but it's the least worst kind of insurance you can buy. And if you have to go into the Medicare Advantage world, let us help put you in what could potentially be the best solution for you at that time. Well, Chris, I want to thank you for your time today. Can you please give your uh, websites out to everybody listening to this that wants to learn more about uh, learning from you and more about Yeah, you? I put the agent stuff over on MedicareAgentTraining.com. Uh, there's a lot of free stuff there under the, the blog area of things that were, and then our Facebook page has like daily updates on what's happening in the world of Medicare when things happen in the news that might affect agents. That's on Facebook.com slash MedicareAgentTraining. All right. Chris, thank you, sir. Thanks, Dave. Good to see you. Have a good day. You have a good one. See ya.